Okay. I think I think in in Christian churches a lot of people know that that um, Israel is a sign of the end. In some churches, the their leaders more like might know and maybe they don't. We might not tell them, but Israel is a sign of the end, right? You know, as I said the other day, when a movie is coming to an end. You know, right? You can tell. In fact, I was saying that there are some people who could watch a show, right, or some movie right now, and within five minutes or so, they could tell exactly how what the track is going to be. And, and I mean, the, what do they call it? The storyline? What's the name for it? They know exactly what it's going to be and how it's going to end, right? And there are some of us. As prophets and saints of God, who can look at this story and we can tell how it's gonna end. Yeah, yeah, are you with me? We can tell how it's gonna end because this book, right? We read this book, and this book gave us the um, the storyline. I'm trying to remember the word, it's not coming to me. You see, because the storyline was written before the foundation of the world. And as I've been saying time and time again, if you believe in the first coming of Christ, and you came as a baby, you're done. You have to believe in the second coming. You can't jump on one and jump off the other one. Right? A guy is going to judge you and he said, the wicked man, but I own mouth, I judge you. Okay? You believe the first one, the same person will give the first one, the same person will give the second one. Right? Isaiah chapter 7, for unto, he said, a virgin will conceive and bear a son. Right? And he said, verse chapter 9, and to us the son is born, and to us the son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, and the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David to order and to establish it with justice and judgment forever. The zeal of the Lord of us perform this. So this one tell you, Right there, from the baby, right, the same baby will become ruler over all the earth. Not just a ruler according to the other man, but a judge after the Father which is in heaven. Because the Bible said, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So, you can't escape if you believe the first one with the baby born in a manger then you have to believe in the second one, right? Because it's not a second person, it's just a second prophecy about the exact, well, the same person. It's the same person we talked about. It's the same person, the same baby coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And from the day he was born, he was called a king, right? When the wise men came and said, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For well, we have seen his star in the east and I come to worship him. Okay? And when he stood before Pilate, Pilate heard them calling him king of the Jews. And he asked him, Really? He said, Are you a king? He said, They, they said, He said, do, do you, Are you saying this of yourself? Or? And Pilate started to get upset with him. He said, really? He said, I am a king, yes. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world to be a witness of the truth. So I came here for a purpose until the time would come when I will be king. Pilate was so convinced. Pilate, Pilate didn't even have much, much time before we, we spend much time before uh, with Jesus, 
Why say it before in his presence? And his wife said and told him, have nothing to do with the just man. Stay far from him because I suffered many things in a dream because of him. A pilot said, Pilot told him, he said, um, uh, this is king of the Jews. He put it on the cross, he wrote it in Hebrew, in Latin, and um, what's the other one? Hebrew was Latin and Greek, I think it was. That everybody could see. This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. His own people didn't believe in him, but Pilate found out that it was true. So, when would he be king? Right? His disciples asked him after the resurrection, except a while if he would now set up the kingdom. And he said, I can't answer you on that. That's the Father had that in store, but there's a work for you to do. And you will see power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses for me in, Jude um, in Judea, no, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. I have to remember that my teacher always emphasized that in class. Right? So that's it. All, all over the earth. And so the time has come now when this witness has gone all over the earth. Right? This thing named internet, God has used it for his purpose. The devil wants to use it to tear down people and all manner evil things, but God used it for his own purpose. Right? God used it for his own purpose. The internet. Right, so here we are with the internet today. And I'm on the internet right now. And God is saying that this king that was the, the wise men came to see, he's really going to be a king. He's going to sit on the throne. And so all of these things that are going on in the world will come to an end. And the devil's notice it. You know, I've been going over these things with you, and I'm telling you that people who are claim to be children of God who are um, ministers like myself. They don't know what how it is. But the people who are in the darkness, they know what how it is. You understand? They know, like criminals, they know it's, it's, it's time for them to draw down and, and tear down as fast as they can right now. Because there won't be much time before all of this will be over for them. So they are having their field day. And Jesus said, except those days should be shortened, then no flesh will be saved. We want to turn to Ezekiel chapter 37 because in this scripture, I have heard a lot of preachers use it. And they they even have a song about it. about ye dry bones in the word of the Lord. And to people it's just like something rhythmic or maybe something about um, something that you can use philosophically. But this was not something of philosophical, uh, I mean not something of philosophy. It's not something of, of um, something emotional that Maybe you go to a, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, or whatever, to, you know, let them tell you what's going on here. This is a prophecy, right? The Bible said, Joseph, um, not Joseph, sorry, Ezekiel said, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. So when you already said the hand of the Lord is upon me, if you are a person who understands what he's saying, then you understand. Okay, so he, he's not saying that he was maybe, you know, sitting down drinking. He could have been doing anything, really. But what he's really saying that God took him, you know, like, took him from where he was into another thing. Okay, so if he was sleeping, God took him in his dream. All right? If he was awake, God took him in a vision. And all of a sudden, he started to see something different. 
This was not something that was right in front of him. But he's now in a different scene, a different setting. And he knows that God is doing something. He doesn't understand what it is, but just like any one of us, we know we are in for something now, whatever God is going to show us. And it says that, and God carried me to, to cause me to pass by, hold on, there, uh, set me in a valley which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very, very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. So, all of a sudden he's in a scene where all he look at is just the bones, bones. And he's, he's looking, just bones. And he said they were very dry. Right? You know, you eat meat and you eat chicken or whatever it is. And if you're a person who likes to chew bones, like a lot of people like to chew their bones, you actually hate when you come on a bone and it's dry. And sometimes you like turn it over and over and over and over and there's nothing you can get out of it. You just throw it away. You can't bite it or nothing. Right? And sometimes somebody might say, well, it either overcooked or the animal was too old or I don't know what it is, but the, the, he was saying the bones were very dry. In other words, that all the substance, everything had gone out of them. It, 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 they are aged to the place where nothing is inside of them. Okay? Nothing. No substance, no oil, nothing inside of them. They have been sitting there for a very long time. But the Bible said, God said to him, and he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, thou knowest. So, well, um, Ezekiel said, well, <laughs> let me not even say anything because I know God can do it. It, 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 does, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. It, 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 it looks really terrible right now, but I know that God is able. And so if He asks me, can they live? I'm not going to put it beyond God. Right? And people who know God seriously, like I do, know that we can't put anything beyond God. So I'm saying, we know that. When you're growing up, you hear people tell you like, with God all things are possible, and God can do anything. But that is just lip service. You see? That's just lip service. It takes faith, and it takes understanding to get to that level. Because you hear it, but when the time comes, do you exercise faith in that? No. That means it means nothing. Okay? Because you're going to say, well, just like Lazarus, we just spoke about, he was dead, and everybody thought that was the end of it, but Jesus raised him from the dead. So, his disciples learned something about him and how he operates. Right? So, here it is these men, these people were dead, and for a long time, until the bones were dried. And they weren't even at an uh, honorable, uh, what, there, it wasn't something honorable for them either. The Bible said they were in the open valley. Right? Bones just cast away like that. They weren't buried, they weren't, you know, they weren't uh, mourned. Right? So many of them just cast away like that. And Ezekiel is stunned at the whole thing. And God put him on the spot. Say, can these dry bones live? Right? Can these bones live? And I answered, I can't imagine Ezekiel that said, Lord, you alone know. You alone know. I, I won't even say a word. Because the situation looks very dismal. It looks, I mean, awful. I mean, it's a tragic situation. Right? But I know who you are. So I'm just going to say, you know. But God said to him, Prophesy unto these bones 
and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to come enter into you, and ye shall live. So God gave him the answer. He asked, Can these bones live? I know he's telling me. God said, Yes. They can live, and I am going to resurrect them. I am going to make them live. And you will be my, my, my servant, right? my instrument, to help to bring them back to life. So you understand, God is very particular with who he chooses, isn't it? See what I'm saying? Because if Ezekiel was a person who didn't have faith in God, then God could use him in the equation. But he had faith in God. That's why he said to him, Lord, I, I, know, I know you already. I know you are that nothing is impossible with you. And you might really just resurrect these people for real. So I'm just telling you, you know. And he said, yes, I know. And I'm telling you that I'm going to resurrect them. Right? But what is this thing all about? Okay? So let's go a little further. The scripture said, He said, I will, the Lord said, Behold, I will breathe breath into you, cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, as the muscles, the tissue, right? And will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So God is here making a covenant with the bones that are dead, that are, are, that are bare. I'm talking about dead, grief. The bones that are bare and dry, and God is making a covenant with them. Right there in the open valley where they were buried without a ceremony. Or uh, not even buried, I said they were cast on the, the face of the earth. Without, without ceremony, without without condolences, without any, any flowers or, or whatever it was they would do with their funeral, no, no mourning, all right? They were cast, they scattered. The Bible said, God is saying, I will make you live. He said, I'll make you live. So the scripture says, I'm going to use you, Ezekiel, and you are going to work with me with this, right? At the same go. Some day you people work with me, right? You heard it, right? And God said, Ezekiel, just, just work with me, man. We, we're going to do this together, right? And Ezekiel now is like, all right, now you said it. So what's the next thing we do here now? Right? And he said to him, now prophesy. So at verse 7, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. So as he prophesied, all of this here are, are nice, and it would be a nice for real. And it, the bones started to come together. Right? Bones come together, and they, they came together the right way. Right? In the shape of a, a skeleton here. And, Another one here and another one here, right? And Ezekiel is saying, what? He's looking and he's saying, And when I beheld, lo, the sinews, the muscles, tissues came upon them, and flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. So now they lay on the ground. And he's looking now and he's saying, instead of seeing um, dry bones, now he sees dead corpses, corpses on the earth. He sees so many of them on the earth. And dead bodies now. The bodies are there. But they, they're looking good, but they can't move. Right? It's the Bible says when God made Adam with a living soul, and then 
The next thing that God did was what? He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And I don't know, maybe Ezekiel remembered that while he was watching this in, in the vision. He said that the bodies are now together. The only thing they need now is for the breath to, of life to go into them. And Ezekiel, as I said, God is working. He said, work with me, man. Work with me. He said, okay, here. Here's, here's the next instruction. Right? The next instruction, he said, and when I beheld, verse 9, Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, Prophesy, son of man, And say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, And breathe upon these slain, That they may live. So I prophesied as I was commanded, As, was, as he commanded me, And the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up on their feet, an exceeding great army. So, so he prophesied to the wind. And because of the multitude of the people there, he don't need one, one um, air tanker of oxygen, or maybe a tractor trailer coming up with oxygen. He needed a lot of wind. And not a lot of air to bring these people back to life. So he prophesies to the wind. And the wind, the Bible says, come from the four farms, from the four corners of the earth. Right? Comes. And this is exactly why it's going to happen. Okay? Because this all you see here is a prophecy. Right? And the wind blew upon them. And they stood up now an exceeding great army. Notice the Bible said an exceeding great army because now they are able to defend themselves, to fight for themselves. And for those who wanted to see their destruction and those who caused them to be in that valley of dry bones in the first place, they are able to stand up in their own defense. Be and, 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 and let's read a little more because the Bible says here, Then said he unto me, Son man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dry, and we, our hope is, lo is lost, for we are cut off from our paths. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place you in your own land and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. So when you read about these four winds, right, understand when the Bible talks about four winds, it's talking about the whole world, you see. One of the things that man has not been able to, to track, to understand about this world is wind. Okay? He can maybe track the water and follow the water. And of course the land is there, right? But as to the wind, that's one thing he cannot track, right? What did Jesus say to Nicodemus, right? He said, the wind blow it where it listed. You hear the sound of it, but you can't tell where it's coming from. And after it passed, you, you can't tell where it went either. Right? But in truth and in fact, that wind could circle right around and come right back to you, and you wouldn't even know it was the same wind. So, that's why things like cyclones and, and um, hurricanes and all these things, they're so hard for men, tornadoes, to, to, to deal with. They just come out of nowhere. And then they just disappear. Where do they go? Okay? So, the wind is, air is, is constantly moving all over the earth. Round and round and round. 
the wind could be just hot right now and the moment it come back it, it drops to freezing temperature what happened we don't know a cold front comes in brings wind it brings rain everything the temperature changes everything then another one comes in changes right so this wind is all over the earth swirling swirling back and forth back and forth so in this figure I just skip to talk about the four winds and we are talking about the regathering of Israel that God would bring them back to be a nation and it is a sign of the end and the scripture is telling you that that he said will open their graves they have been scattered they have been um, abused they have been trampled on the feet uh, just like how it was shown in the valley right they have been cast into the valley right just like that okay and and my teacher told me that Hitler didn't like the Jews because in truth and in fact he was thinking of them like they were a people within his people, right? The same philosophy that caused why Moses was in a, in a basket in the bulrushes, right? Why so many were killed as babies. That's what's causing it. Because Pharaoh said they are citizens of the country yes but they are another people and that's why I said you know I, I this friend um, is, is Mo Moses he told me, that's when he told me that Moses is motion right but he lives here and I told him it would better have if you live in Israel right but a lot of people still believe that they are safer in their foreign country than being in the, in the land which was given to their fathers. Okay? And they will have a rude awakening with that. It never worked in the days of Pharaoh. Right? They went down to Egypt and set up themselves in such a way that they did not remember why they were there. But their fathers, when they came, they told Pharaoh, they said, For to sojourn in the land have we come. In other words, we came here because there was a problem where we are, so we intend to go back to where we came from. But they didn't go back. And they settled there. They settled there so long that the memory of Joseph was gone when the Pharaoh came and he said, Who are these people? Why, why are they here? I said, but there's something different about them. They, they don't even worship our idols and all these things. They're always talking about there's a true and living God and He's invisible and all these kind of things. Why should we have these people here? Why don't we just turn them into slaves and we can um, oppress them? Moreover, they might join with our enemies and fight against us. Okay? And that's what He did. Right? It's the same principle, the same concept, the same ideology of, of the fiend and the devil named Hit, Adolf Hitler that was in him. It went out, the same thing also in Russia with Stalin. The same thing in uh, so many countries all over the world. The same thing is going on. I said, why should we allow these people? Haman, that was the same thing why he wanted to destroy them. Why should we allow them? I said he was bowed down to me and he won't bow down to me and say, you're only bowed down to God. Does he know that he's in a different country, he's not in his own country? So he can't tell us what to do. Right? And so now they are slaves, they are captives on our country. They must do what we tell them to do. Okay? And if not, then we're going to put them to death or we're going to, not going to put them to death, we're going to exterminate them, wipe them out. The same concept, it has been there coming down. Right? Abraham had a vision where the horror of darkness came away when he, Bible said that, when he put the sacrifice there, and God told him, he said, your people are going to be in a strange land and they're going to suffer down 